Welcome back, everybody. Part two with Josie Scott, Mr. Brian Hopkins, my man, Nick Martin down there. Um, on the last, on part one of the episode, we went pretty deep on uh, talking about the passing of Josie Scott's son, Cody. And man, heavy, heavy, heavy stuff. And I cannot imagine myself as a father ever having to go through such a thing as you have. And, and you have, Josie, and... You're coming out the other end of it, although that tunnel is very, very, very long. I don't think you ever really do completely come out of it. But from what we've seen so far and what we've talked about um, in part one, um, you're using that as a motivation. As I said, that dream you had, Cody telling you to get up, um, you have. What has that entailed getting up? What have you done since that moment of clarification or clear, that moment of clarity for you? Um, what has it been that you've done? just sort of giving myself over to the idea of of making my way back into the music industry it, it made it real for me it made it a reality for me um you know getting uh the 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 right people um on the phone to reach out to um you know uh several people uh have helped me to, to get back in into that ring um like writing with my uh, <clears throat> writing and practicing and rehearsing with with my with my son dylan has been yeah. a big part of it man um uh, i like just having that connection uh with with my son with my son uh playing rhythm guitar um, I remember being out on the road and like 2008 and uh, hearing that he was uh, starting to play Guitar Hero. And I was like, oh, shit, he's going to be a musician. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the next thing you know, he was playing bass. And the next thing you know, he was playing guitar because, you know, every bass player is a frustrated guitar player. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> so the the next thing you know he was uh he was playing guitar and um you know he had he had said uh as as far back as as 2000 uh you know 15 and 16 and 17 he was like man you know we should get together and we should jam and i was like yeah you know maybe so maybe we'll do that you know um but i didn't want to you know i i didn't want to get his hopes up and i didn't want to you know, uh, get back, uh, in the music industry just yet. And I was still raising the girls and, and still raising justice and, and doing the family thing. And after, you know, back in the early two thousands, I think growing up the way I did, um, uh, and finally getting, you know, it's one thing to chase the rabbit your whole life when, there's this dog park in West Memphis, Arkansas, where these greyhound dogs chase this little rabbit and they chase it around, around and around this, this, this park and people bet on the dogs or whatever. And I, I never went there, but I always heard about it when I was growing up as a kid. So we always had this, this saying around Memphis about chasing the rabbit, chasing the rabbit. And, but what I figured out with the music industry is what do you do when you catch the rabbit? Because, you know, I told my parents, I'm going to make it. I'm going to die. I'm going to make it or die trying. You know, I'm going to get a record deal. And I think all the way up to the year 2000, I think I turned 28 that year. And my, uh, my mom's friend was like, so are you planning on going back to college or what are you going to do? Right. Yeah. Uh, and I was like... I was like, how dare you doubt me? I'm never going to college. Right. <laughs> All this crazy stuff. So, and God knows we, uh, as Saliva, we got turned down by every record deal or every record label at least twice. Everybody passed, as they call it. And uh, and then Island Def Jam came along and uh, Lee or Cohen at, at Island Def Jam uh, had sort of proven his... Uh, he had sort of proven himself with hip hop and R and B and he wanted to prove himself with, uh, with rock and roll. And he was like, 
uh, he's a he's like uh, an Israeli um, he he's like one of those Israeli special forces type guys, and he was like, I like this Whoa. group, I like this <laughs> band, I like these guys. And, well, um, along so, with millions and millions of other fans out there, yeah. so it's glad he got a, you know, glad he just took that on for you guys, man. Because wow, Absolutely, I mean, it's man. live is like a household name. I mean, literally, Nick and I, it's it's part of my 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 playlist of life in that age. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like, how man, thank always. you, yeah. How's that thank feel? Thank you so like, much. You guys are so how's, sweet. How's that feel to you to have these guys say that about? what you did because you know that you just it came you channeled this music it came out of you and and these two grown men are saying you're a part of their life playlist like that's we we as artists are chasing those moments all the time so when someone says that to us you're like you you go thank you oh thank you but then when you step away you actually realize wow i i don't know these people Yet I played a part in their teenage years or their adult years or right now. What I'm doing right now has an impact on them. What's that like? It's just uh, the only word I could come up with is humbling. It's just so humbling to finally uh, arrive at, at moments and, and get to hear people say beautiful things like that. I don't take it for granted for one second and it's just beautiful music to my ears, pun intended, uh, <laughs> to, to hear, to hear people, uh, that ha say that our music has been a part of their lives. And, and my favorite thing is to, to hear people say how it's gotten through, gotten them through a difficult time in their life. That's what it's all about for me beyond any kind of monetary value that it could ever have or any kind of uh, fame that it could ever bring me. I think touching people's hearts has been my touchstone. It's been, it, it, it's been what really touches me back is knowing that I've had some kind of healing balm if you will effect on people's lives through the power of music because i think that's what music was intended to do ultimately whether it's heavy metal or whether it's jazz or whether it's classical mm. or or whatever type yeah. of music it is i think that's music's purpose is to bring us through those difficult times because the first the first couple of things that we want to reach out to uh, in this life, when we have uh, m mental health problems or physical problems or family problems or, or family trauma or any kind of thing, the first thing we want to do is reach out to music. And usually a therapist is the next thing. So if I've had some kind of therapeutic effect on people dealing with uh, heavy mental health issues or trauma issues or, or things that they've been through in their life, then my job is done. Yeah. And I, well I also done. have, well said. I also have Thank a you. unique uh, perspective on saliva that you may find interesting. I I've worked in radio um, the last 20 years of my life. Not, not no, you know, we're talking major, major radio stations in Southern Oregon and one of the stations I tenured on the longest was 96.9 The Rogue. Um, it's a rock station. And I eventually climbed the ladder to where I could program that some bitch. And you have to do your research. Oh, yeah. And you go, you, there's this, you know, you get like six, 700 songs, sometimes 500. Anyway, you get 500 songs that you could put on this radio station. And saliva was a gold, meaning it is one of those ones that is always 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 in the playlist that will always get played no matter what you know you get this new stuff in wow. you it in you take it out etc cetera, etc cetera. so and and to this day cuz i don't work there anymore at that particular station but i still live here and i still tune in and guess what still there yeah. but few of them click still there always yeah, is still there yeah, yeah yeah they're they're there so i mean that's <laughs> that's just that's a testament to how how good your music is and 
Thank you, man. It's amazing, man. And, and with that being said, Brian, thank you for getting Josie Scott to come on DadCast. And Josie, thank you for taking time to come on our little show, man. We appreciate it. So there's some man, love right we there. Have to, yeah. Thank oh, we're not done. Thank we're not you. done. I'm just thanking you now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. I was going to say, because this guy's got a new project that we need to know about. Oh, we, we we're not done. Oh, I know. Oh, I, I know yeah. it's a project. I got to ask you. Like, I'm trying to. So you, you stepped away from saliva like, what, 12 years ago? Yeah. Yep. So, Back in uh, 2010. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what have you noticed difference about the music industry? My background is in like concert promotion and I actually managed a band back in the day that we got signed on to Tooth and Nail Records and now I'm working with a good buddy of ours, Jesse Lawson. Out, he has a studio down in Reading. He was the guitar player, songwriter for Sleeping with Sirens. And everything is so different than what it was 10, 12 years ago, where you've got TikTok, you've got Instagram, you've got everything is social media based. And you can't get a song on the radio unless it's on TikTok. And it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> so so what, what have you noticed coming out with your new stuff, like having to battle through all that and all the, the teeny boppers on TikTok doing the weird dances and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I, I think, like they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I think that the technology has moved by leaps and bounds and is still moving by leaps and bounds. I think, I, I think it probably hasn't changed as much as it's even going to change in the next probably 10 or 15 years uh, that we witness um, the changes in social media and how music is played and how music is offered and, and the different uh, avenues and, and even little clips of music because like on TikTok, for instance, uh, it like uh, you guys were saying, um, little snippets of music now you know uh are turned into these little commercials and these little dances are, are little things that people do and and they go viral again like a bunch of a bunch of my friends um you know from saving able to uh um uh to uh pop evil to different bands have have broke on social media as well as on the radio so i think uh catching up with the technology has definitely been um something uh that this old man is trying to do you know at 50 <laughs> years old i'm definitely trying to to catch up with the uh with the new technology but the the more things uh remain the same is what i mean by that is just coming from that real earnest empathetic place in your heart of uh, continuing to boil your music down to that type of realness has not changed it has not uh gotten i, I don't think that has has uh has changed as much uh over over the past 20 years i think those those are the things that remain the same is coming from that real place and and channeling that uh that real thing that comes through like uh Elvis said one time, he said, uh, music is not from me. It's through me. I just have the best seat in the house. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and keeping, keeping that channel open, uh, and, and, and not falling for all of the, uh, pitfalls that I fell for as a young man. Uh, because like I said, I grew up in Memphis, uh, I grew up a, a, a poor Memphis boy. You know what I'm saying? I had, I had never seen, I, I mean, I literally went from being dollarless to having like a hundred thousand dollars thrown in my pocket or thrown in my lap, which was the worst possible looking back. <laughs> yep. Like if you would ask the 28 year old me about that, I'd have been like, Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. God. But, <laughs> If you ask the 50 year old me about that, I'm like, worst case scenario, dude, awful, bad, bad, right. bad, bad. Uh, because, you know, it led me along the primrose path, dude. 
and that's what yeah. you know that's exactly what the devil wants is he wants to right. he wants to he wants to pull you down that path just long enough that you don't see the door closing behind you man so uh but being armed with that knowledge now of uh not falling for those those pitfalls anymore and uh having being blessed with children to love and provide for and having a beautiful wife uh, and a family to provide for and having that being the most important thing in my life instead of myself, instead of self, 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 you know, perspective changer, Um, isn't it? It's absolutely such a perspective changer, man. And I'm so grateful for that, man. I'm just so grateful for that. And Uh, Like I said earlier, I've realized that the most important thing for me to do in this life is to give it away, is to give it away. I think that's that's the lesson for all of us, whether it be uh, doing the dad cast or uh, working in radio or being a a TikToker or whatever your your as my mother would say, whatever your ministry may be it's giving back. It's, it's continuing to give back because if you don't ever give anything away, you're never going to see any kind of progress. And I have to keep that channel open, man. I have to keep that channel open because if I keep that channel open, it'll keep rendering those beautiful songs and those beautiful moments. It'll keep rendering those moments back to me. Yeah, And that's, that's my goal. To touch on what Nick said and his question about it, if, if anything changed in the last 12, 13 years, I think you're spot on, but I also believe one of the major changes that has happened is how people consume music nowadays. Yeah. Like you mentioned on, you're getting snippets on TikTok. I'll give you a perfect prime example. Um, my son, <laughs> 12 years old, a couple months back, comes up to me and goes, dad, dad, have you heard of this new band out? I'm like, who would to talk to me? I've got music. Let's go. Let's go. And he's like, I think they're called Metallica. I heard them on stranger things. <laughs> <laughs> and That's this is so where awesome. JP failed as a parent. <laughs> and no, no. And this is, you know, I'm like, son, that's one of daddy's favorite bands that he grew up with. I was listening to them when I was your age uh, in sixth grade, master of puppets came out, buddy. Okay. But uh, the very song you're listening to that you love on Stranger Things, bottom line is it's crazy how it's just coming full circle and everyone gets it. With that being said, the Josie Scott band it is, right? We need to press yeah. for uh, a, uh, a song on Stranger Things season six. And that's that, man. There you go. <laughs> that's all the giving back you'll yes, ever need sir. right there, son. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Most definitely. You... You have two projects, like it, right? There's you have your solo project, Josie Scott, but then what's the other project again? Um, what I don't understand. What do you mean? Oh no, I thought you had something else. You when we were when we chatted last time, you mentioned two separate projects you were doing. Uh, one being Josie Scott, and I thought one had a name, like. And I like oh, it was a band oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm doing uh, the outlaw Josie Scott, and uh, my my band is called Shade Violent. Okay, and that's, that's that's sort of that's the, the other the other project we're Tell doing. Tell us yeah, about it, man. Shade, Shade we got about ten minutes left, give or take. We've barely touched on Dad today. Well, actually, no. That first half was pretty intensive. Um, Tell yes. us about the bands. What's going on now? Is is there where where can people who are listening and watching right now get their grubby little paws on Josie Scott music, new music, all the good stuff, yeah. all the importance? Well, I've got uh, the first single um, sort of in the can right now. I've got to okay. uh, get it, get it produced. I've done a good demo of the of the first single. It's called uh, Evil Knievel, and uh, it's uh you guys are gonna love it what would you classify it, it, your music is it is it rock and roll is it oh it's definitely oh yeah it's okay. it's definitely rock and roll but it took me it, it took me going through what i went through to get back to that 28 year old guy that wrote 
click, click, boom, and always, and your disease, and those songs, because I got away from that, and like I said, I was falling for all those pitfalls that you fall for, uh, whether it be money, or girls, or drugs, or whatever, the, there, there's a plethora of, of, of different uh, uh, avenues you can go, um, but one, you know, once once I uh, once I cleared once I cleared my mind, I I I had a a really interesting conversation with uh, when I first came back, uh, and I and I got in the studio with a friend of mine from Memphis named Malcolm Springer. He was the guy that was a producer on. Um, Evil Knievel, and I, I think I, when, when I first, or when I was coming out of saliva, I I just got lost, man. I got so spiritually and mentally and physically lost, and you know, other songwriters were coming in, and not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because maybe that's a good thing for some people, and and maybe that works for some people for me it kind of poisoned the well a little bit and there was just too many cooks in the kitchen and 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 in different times and uh and I was just spinning my wheels in mud and like I said I had kind of I had kind of checked out uh by 2009 2010 I was so deep in my own bs that that I had I had sort of mentally and physically and spiritually checked out and I I I had after I had this talk with Malcolm Springer he goes where's he's an old country boy so he's like where is that kid that used to walk around with the backpack on his back and the blazer on and you had your little green notebook under your arm where the fuck is that kid at where is that kid where is he at and after we had this conversation, I went outside and I got on the phone with my wife and I'm a real emotional guy, as Brian will tell you, man. I, and I just cried out to my wife. I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I think I made a mistake. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how to, I don't know how to get back to this person I used to be. And my wife told me something that I'll never forget. And this is why I'm in love with this woman, man. And she told me, she said, baby, you belong here. You belong here. And I just, like, it was another moment. It was another one of those moments like that dream of, with Cody and him whispering in my ear and me feeling his breath in my ear and him saying, dad, get up. Come on, pops. Get up. Get up, dad. Come on, pops. Get up. And that coupled with the love of my life telling me you belong here. You belong here. It just made me it 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 made that that 28 year old kid come back that had the little green notebook under his arm. That was my playbook. You know what I mean? I just wrote lyrics and lyrics and lyrics and lyrics. It made me get back to that kid. And it was like a spiritual awakening, man. And when I had that spiritual awakening, I went straight into the studio with Malcolm and wrote like, uh, wrote evil Knievel. Like it never wasn't there, dude. It, it was go. just That's amazing. like that. The, the 28 year old though, with the mind and body of the 50 year old and all the experience that came along with it. So, you know, yeah. the pitfalls, yeah. they're not happening this time around. No, you know sir. Make, yeah. I, and I've gotten you know back in great? the gym and I've lost a hundred pounds. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? I, addiction i'm an addict i'm an addictive personality and yeah. i took all my addictive tendencies you know what i mean for all my uh all my addictive tendencies and i poured them into the gym and now my wife will tell you if i don't go to the gym every day i'm a pissy little soldier man <laughs> i know here's, I, here's <laughs> nick <laughs> yep here's, here's two things i want to say what what makes you special is that you are not afraid to share these stories because the, there is a 
20 year old or 28 year old out there trying to be the next you, but he needs to, he or she needs to know that they are their own, own self. But you are sharing everything. You are not afraid. You are not acting cool. You're not, you have already walked the path, stepped off it and then walking back in and not afraid to, to say, uh, this is different, you know? But you found it, you know your place. And that's what I felt the moment I met you. That's why, because I'm older than you are. And the mm -hmm. thing is, the two, the two of us have similar things, except for I know I have an addictive personality. So being Native American Indian at nine years old, I decided oh, I'm never going to drink or do drugs in my life. Had nothing to do with religion, anything. Wow. I just don't have it. But if I turn this camera around, I can show you a cupboard full of alcohol and wine on the rack for my friends and family and people who come into my house. Because I grew up around it yeah. and I don't think about it. But the thing that 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 thing, there was like there's a connection and I am I can't wait to see what you do next. I can't wait to see what kind of fucking greatness comes out of you next because I watched you take that stage. I watched you go, this is where I belong. Man. May I suggest so a collaboration so between you, you two? Thank you, brother. Uh, dude, I that's, mean it. that would be, we, we already had a collaboration in, in that dressing room, man, yeah. when, when we connected and, and I saw his, I saw, when I saw his face after I told him the story about Cody, me and him were forever bonded after that because I'm the type I'm the type of I'm the type of Joe man that once you get in my feelings, uh, yeah, I, I'll die I'll die for you. I'll I will yeah. fall on my motherfucking sword, dude. And my wife's gonna get on to me for cussing, but <laughs> no. I will fall on my sword, I, I, dude. I will I'll go to war for you, man. And me and Brian Thank had you. that kind of moment, yeah. man. And me and Brian, yeah. uh, dude, me and Brian are brothers yeah. for life. Yep. And I know Brian. Agreed. I know Brian hangs out with good people, so I consider all four of us brothers for life, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I like appreciate you. These guys, dude, if I ever saw you, you two on stage together, it'd be the most epic concert. Brian is one of the most insane frontmen I've ever witnessed. Thank you. Whether it's Thank in you. front of five people it. or ten thousand people, the dude is just. Thank you amazing dude El elvis monroe Thanks. man Thanks. is all yeah. i needed to hear i told him that was the coolest <laughs> band name that was the coolest band name i ever heard man <laughs> thank right? you thank Good you stuff. Now, you as know, far as you know falling on your sword and whatnot it's like i i i'd take a bullet for that guy nick right down there i'd prefer it go through the shoulder mind you but you know i'd still <laughs> take it <laughs> I mean, right? Damn. I, I would Damn. dive in front of a bullet for you too, but again, I'd go for the shoulder. Right, you know, for a thigh, you know. Just, yeah, uh, exactly. Got kids to take care of, man. We're not ready to do that just I, quite I, yet. Just after talking to Josie and then Jared from Saving Able, we need to like put together a school of rock for up and comers taught by the guys that have done it and been there and gone down the avenues and shown them what kind of bullshit not to get into. Like, Nick, for anyone watching or idea. listening to this, that is a terrible podcast idea. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we better get on that. I, I mean, there's, there's so many bands. I mean, I can remember I was working with this one Christian band and they're going to remain unnamed, but like these guys were going to be like the next My Chemical Romance. They were, they were on fire, super, super good. They were a bunch of Christian dudes, but doing kind of the switch foot thing where it was, they were playing all kinds of venues. And they the money got thrown at them the fame and they all went down the cheating on their wives drugs and it's like guys i come on you guys had everything at your fingertips and you lost it oh yeah. no and had they had someone mentoring them that had been there and gone down and seen the path and seen on the other side of what the what's out there yeah i, yeah. I think a lot of these younger up and coming bands could like it could change it, lives it, it, there is help. something to be said, I, I, but I've, I've watched too, just so you know, like talking and hearing it, you can't force these things onto people. I, I've been around yeah. gotta walk pro their own path. that, that, like, that, yeah, that have, that won world series game, you know, like won the world series and other teammates 
turning to me, turn, you know, saying, you got to tell him, save his money. We're not always going to be in the World Series. We're not always going to have these things. And you're not always going to get a chance to meet the president or something. Just because you don't like the president doesn't mean you shouldn't go with the team. You know, all these random things that go on Mm -hmm. and you can say it, bring this stuff up, but it doesn't mean that they have to listen because years later, those same people are coming to me going, man, I, I, you know, I should have listened to you. You, you play, you, you brought that up and I got hurt and now I'm out of baseball. And that's just two years later, you know, like yeah. life has changed. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a thing that you just gotta, I don't know. You, you have to live through it and hope that you're making the best decisions as you go. And you're, you know, a lot of times like this, you guys could be mentoring someone right now who's watching this and you don't know it they're sitting at home and 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 this conversation is helping them in some way because i know as a young man there were things that i had to witness and things that i knew i didn't want to put on future uh, girlfriends wives future whatever it was in my life at a young age i did not want to do that to the people around me and so I made yeah. the choice, you know, at a young age. Um, and it just sticks with me. You know, I remember the first time I was in the studio and someone tried to slip me alcohol because they wanted me loosened up. And I'm like, and I, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I could smell this. Yeah. And I'm like, what? it pissed me off. I was saying I was doing cardio today and I was thinking about that. I was like, that was like, that was some shady shit that they yep. did. Yep. Yeah, it was because it was my first time in the studio, and yeah, I was nervous and whatever. But I got through it. Had you, you know, expressed to these people it. that you don't drink? Oh yeah, they knew. Okay, so they, they then that that's some bullshit right there. Absolutely. Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's on them. Yeah. 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 But I, you know, it wasn't like a drink. But what I'm saying is that we all we can do is continue to share and talk about our stories and share. Like, like I just said to you, Josie, the fact that you're okay sharing everything allows somebody who wants to be like you to know that guy is, he's cool. Like that guy is the shit, but he's, he's also okay with being human and being having emotions and being okay with being scared being being hurt you know you share the whole realm that's what makes a difference in people's lives that's the thing that that's why i do this with you guys you know that's why i'm in the even you know sitting here and i couldn't wait i was like i would be on with jersey yeah please like you said that's what i Sorry. I'm it's sorry. that Zoom, it's that pregnant pause that Zoom delay. Josie, Brian, yeah. he's just, you guys are just normal guys like everyone else. So as a matter of fact, Josie uh, is just as normal as I am. I dye my beard too, man. I I, I do. <laughs> just saying. Man, hey, we we used to <laughs> sing this. We we used to sing this song on the bus. We'd say, "Just for men, just yes. for men, make me feel like I'm young again." <laughs> <laughs> But, I get I get the know, dollar store I, brand though, man. Way cheaper, just a buck. Dude, Easy peasy. Same. <laughs> when, when I when I met when I met Brian, I was like, you know, he's an intimidating figure, man. You know, because he's a, a a big old tall, muscular looking dude, biker looking dude, man. And I was like, but he's just a baby. Gonna, he's a big bear. Like, he's. <laughs> I was like, is this dude going to kick my ass or is he going to be sweet or what is this guy? You guys. Oh, man, I, got, I got a good story about the first time I met Brian. We're doing a was... show at this little place called the Rocky Tonk in Medford, Oregon. And it was for yep. a nonprofit I work with with my mother-in-law. And there is this asshole that was just being a, just a dick. And just like. Sound man. Runs with, yeah. And Sound just, man. and Brian, like this big, massive guy. And then Ben Carey, a little little australian guy both of them like My super, super sweet and uh and brian like the guy i guess the guy was like getting in my mother-in-law's face or something and brian just bolts out and i'm like oh shit right and, and then at the end of the night like he's the sweetest guy in the world and it's like wow that's that's crazy uh, I, it's it's what it goes back to what he said 
earlier though he he said you know Joseph said he would he would dive on a sword and I was okay with the guy chirping at me or whatever yeah. you know whatever he wanted to do but but I was not okay with him causing trouble to to Ben and then your your yeah. mother-in-law and I'd had it I was like yeah. no <laughs> I'm like your mom, your mother-in-law was crying, begging me not to hurt this man. Yeah, and I was like, okay, <laughs> you better just tell him to leave. It was so hilarious. But, I was like, oh man, introduce you. But no, Josie Scott, yes. I, I I wanted to introduce you to my baby girl. This is my littlest, the Avery, the singer-songwriter I was telling you about. She just got home off the bus. Hi, Avery. It's nice to meet you, gorgeous. Oh, right in the face. <laughs> you are so says, pretty. You're pretty. You're gorgeous. He says. She can't hear because the headphones. Yeah. yeah. Here. Okay. You Hello. are so gorgeous. You're so pretty. It's nice to meet you, Avery. I'm Josie. Wait, you're not shy. She's not oh shy. What? She is not shy. Oh She's my not gosh. shy. What is happening is, oh, I know. It's, yeah, I know. I know what I, I know that crush face. All right, go inside. Go inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are super happy to meet you, and I'm gonna play them. I'm I'm gonna send Josie your song later. He's okay. I would love that. It's, it's amazing. It's cute. It's really you, good. Guys, yeah. We are. We've gone way over. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up with asking Nick a question. Nick, do you have a fast five? I do. All right, Josie. All right. Five fast questions for Nick. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's Boom. do this. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Uh, my children's faces because they're the sweetest, most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. That's awesome. All right. Your favorite venue to play? Um, uh, uh, can it be a, a festival type thing? Sure. Uh, there was there was a uh, there was a festival in Kenosha. I think it's in Kenosha, Wisconsin, or or somewhere in Wisconsin, um, called Summerfest or Rockfest or whatever. And uh, that's uh, that's probably the coolest place. Buffalo, New York's really cool too. Um, but that just the loudest, most rock and roll infested loving people i've ever <laughs> seen in my life nice okay your favorite band to play with like you, the, you oh both... seven dust seven, seven dust seven okay. dust Very they'll good. wear you they will wear your ass out though don't get it twisted <laughs> they will wear your ass That's what I've heard. out <laughs> all right your favorite yeah, family dust. vacation spot oh hawaii definitely that's an easy answer awesome. hawaii paradise Heaven on earth, as close as we'll get this side of heaven is Hawaii. All right. Wow. Yeah. I would Favorite. venture to say close to that is South Florida because you also get fish tacos and the humidity is all the same. South and Florida it too. <laughs> my son, my son just called me. He's in a caravan leaving South Florida where he lives. And because of the, yeah. Because of the, the, Ian, yeah, the, the weather, the hurricane in. And so, they're going to my, my niece's house with like uh, there's a caravan of people going four and a half hours away to because they've been e evacuated like it's a mandatory evacuation there right now so I he, heard he said that, he's about man. three hours yeah away. it's yeah, crazy i got family i got family there too and well we don't need to talk that they're they're preparing as well yeah nick was that yes, it exactly. Last question. Okay. okay favorite meal to cook for your kids when they were little uh uh <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs is my specialty okay. like i will hey. not <laughs> I, you, my i'm not a very good cook but my spaghetti and meatballs will make your tongue beat your fucking forehead apart trying to <laughs> it. delicious. i want to try some challenge that. accepted i think delicious. i'm gonna have to try those damn that sounds right. amazing <laughs> josie i have two <laughs> questions for you uh not right now okay. um first one is Man, we're way over, but I feel like we could probably go another two or three hours. So I would like to, A, 
formally invite you back to do another episode with us if that is cool enough and b um i you know hey brian i didn't do one b or c or e again um and b no um <laughs> we do a father's day special every single year um where we get as many of our past guests from the previous year on so there's like 30 squares on the screen um Obviously, we don't film it on the day of Father's Day. We do it a few weeks prior, but I, I'm formally inviting you, um, if time willing, of course, uh, to make, take part in that episode as well with all of us. First of all, I'm so honored that you would even ask me to do that, man. That is, like, I really appreciate that. It's thank a fun you. day, man. Yes, I yeah. would be honored to do it, dude. Ooh, honored thank you. It. Thank you. And the final question, the most important question I like to ask here on DadCast um, is this. If you could impart one bit of advice to any new father or expecting father, what is that advice going to be? To teach your kids to guard their heart, to teach your children to not be desensitized by this world we live in that wants so badly to make them cynical and to make them, ugh, you know, just not worried about their fellow man. I would teach them to love one another in, in a way that that guards their heart from all the nasty crazy awful stuff that's out there and there you go ladies and gentlemen josie scott thanks for coming on dadcast Dude, man. thank You've you been amazing man that was awesome thank you thank you uh jp and thank you Brian uh, and thank you Mr. Martin for having me and by the way I think me and Mr. Martin may be kin folks because I'm kin to a bunch of Martins yeah oh, oh <laughs> yeah. possibility yeah. <laughs> we may be cousins we got, awesome. you, so you, you're gonna be in Vegas anytime soon um I may be yeah I should be through there yep okay well uh, obviously let us know let Brian know um, I'm sure he would love to have him on Hero's Journey podcast. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, yeah. Check it out on the YouTube yeah. and anywhere you get your podcasts. Hero's Journey oh, is amazing. Uh, we probably we talk all we, the time. Yeah. We're swapping song <laughs> ideas and all kinds nice. of stuff. Nice. Awesome. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and mind you, that, that what I sent you, that was just what came out, whatever. I love it. I don't, I, I just, it's one of those things where I just, I'm not going to do anything with it unless we're sitting in the same room where you go, Hey, I took that one line and this is what I, I don't care. Like <laughs> I just walked home from the gym after listening to our interview and those are all your words. Man. I just took the, the words from that interview and, and I rewrote it again and I'll send you what i what i the lyrics that i rewrote but they're yours and Man, it even drives I, it home even more yeah when when, when i went when when, when when i used that man i would always cut you in on the publishing baby you know that <laughs> but what i was gonna say that, what i was gonna say about brian earlier uh was when 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 that big old intimidating guy when when that moment presented itself and I, and I, I couldn't sugarcoat it, man, I had to give him what happened about Cody and watching that big man melt in front of me, like an iceberg bonded us forever, man. Like it bonded, like there was just a thing that happened where his soul like joined my soul man and and yeah. seeing his, seeing his vulnerability seeing the vulnerability of that warrior and knowing he had the warrior spirit and the vulnerability coupled together made a gigantic heart for me man oh, and i will you. always love me some brian man he yes is, uh, the same i love you dude and that's that's what i said me. that's what that's what i was saying to you about this is that you're not afraid. You are standing there on stage 
like a leader going, look, follow me. Yet I'm, you know, you were not afraid that you were vulnerable. You were not afraid. And that's my point. So I appreciate that you see that in me. But well, I think my connection to you is it was like looking in a mirror and I saw myself wow. in you. And when you, I was nervous doing that interview for, I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it as a favor for Rock Rage Radio. And so I was nervous here. I, you're, a, you're a huge rock star, man. And, and, but I forgot about all that because all of a sudden I'm hearing this man sharing this horrible situation, but also I can connect. I know that I've been spoken to in my sleep. I know that I, that's what gets me up and makes me work harder and do the things, chase these things that are beyond the realm of what anybody else would think of going, yeah, this is what I choose. This is what I do. This is my life. This is how and, I do it. And I can validate you, everything he says about you, Josie, because I had dinner with him and a few other people not five days ago, and he wouldn't stop gushing about you, man. I'm just saying. Man. <laughs> That's true. Well, we the will, feeling is mutual, said, brother. Thanks. We will thanks, continue man. this you. in the future on another episode to everyone watching around the world, whether you're watching or listening. Thank you so much. We love you. We appreciate your support. Please like it up, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Nick Martin on behalf of himself, Brian Hopkins, Josie Scott. Thank you so much for coming on DadCast. We'll catch all of you on the very next episode. Have a great rest of your yep. whenever it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah.